bus driver, Daryl. Hi, kids. I'm Conductor Cam. And I am Mrs. C. Welcome to the Crossroads. We are going on an adventure as we read the Bible and take a journey with Jesus. What path are you on? Did you choose to travel with Jesus? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So let's stand at the crossroads and look. We're going to ask for the ancient past, the ways from long ago that God taught us in his words. We are going to ask where the wood way is, and we will walk in it, and then we will find rest for our souls. Check it out. The verse for our unit. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. 1 John 4 verses 7 and 8. Check out this new video reminder that because of God's great love for us, he sent us a savior and his name is Jesus. pasture of life, we are going to trust in God for he is our rock and God is love. In the pasture, we are reminded that God is our good shepherd. The good shepherd loves and cares for all of his sheep. 
he will even die for his sheep. That is a reminder that Jesus is our good shepherd and he died for us. Jesus said, no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus calls us his friends. Later, that is exactly what Jesus did. He died for us to take the punishment for our sins. We all do bad stuff and it keeps us separated from God because God cannot have any sin near him. But if we accept God's son, Jesus, as the one who takes away our sin and trust and love him, we can be forgiven of our sins and be with God too. And because of Jesus' example of love, we can also love and forgive others. Check out this fun video from Evan and I as we shared about Jesus' gift of love and salvation for all who will believe. Sometimes it's confusing the words that people use to talk about faith in God, but hopefully this will help you understand some parts of God's forgiveness from Jesus even better. And we're both in the recording? We should be. We're going to find out <laughs> if it's a problem. Hi, I'm Evan from Student Ministries. I'm sorry, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to start over then, huh? Take two. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Evan from Student Ministries. And I'm Julie from Kids Alive. And we are here to pump you up. <laughs> Spiritually, of course. <clears throat> and share the gospel. And easy ways to understand. So, um, I'm going to pretend to be a kid. Okay. Uh, let's try this now. So, hey, Julie. Yeah, Evan! <laughs> Did you know that God is a holy God? <gasps> he has a lot of holes. Is it from the nails? Okay, so you can kind of understand already that there's some problems with what I was saying. So, no, that actually means that God is good and perfect. Oh, okay. Did you also know that man has sinned? Oh, well, I'm not a man. I'm a girl. That makes sense. But, Julie, um, that actually means that we've all done wrong things in our life. So that's what a oh, sin is. okay. All right. Now, you, you be the kid this time. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right, Evan. Did you know that Jesus paid the price for our sins and rose again? How much does a rose cost? Uh, actually, it means that Jesus allowed himself to be punished instead of you and me for our sins, and he became alive again. Oh, wow, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Cool. Now, mm -hmm. Evan, yeah. would you like to ask Jesus into your heart and be Lord of your life? Well, how would he fit? I mean, I'm a big dude, but how would he fit? And does that mean he's like the Lord of the Rings? No! It's more about having a personal relationship with Jesus and following what he says to do what is right. Okay, I get it. So it's it means that I can have like eternal life. Yes. yes. Okay. And that means that you get to be with God forever. And when you die, you go to heaven. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. This has been Christian Jargon, brought to you by Evan and Julie. Don't forget that sometimes the things that we're used to don't make a lot of sense to the outside world or to someone that's maybe more literal. So let's all have courage to share the gospel in ways that people actually understand. Bye, see you next Bye, time. Bye, guys. This week, we will see that God is love. Because of his love, we can choose to love others instead of being selfish. Being selfish means we talk only about ourselves. We think only about ourselves. We do stuff only for ourselves. We put ourselves ahead of others. Well, you get the idea. But God said for us to love others. He also gave us the Word, the Bible, and the laws of God, and the living Word, Jesus, to help us know about His love and to teach us how to love others. Let's remember that God's Word, the Bible, and the living Word, Jesus, is a gift of God's love for all who will accept it, for all who will believe. God is our rock and God is love. And because of his love, we can choose to love instead of being selfish. Check out our crossroads signs and think about how God being our rock helps us decide which way to choose to go.
are you going to go, content or covet? God is my rock, and God is self-sufficient. Which way are you going to go, love or selfish? God is my rock, and God is loving. Which way are you going to go, hospitality and compassion versus lonely and indifferent? is gracious and good. Which way are you going to go, just or fair? God is my rock and God is just. Which way are you going to go, reverence or disrespect? God is my rock. God is all powerful, holy, and glorious. Which way are you going to go, truth or lies? God is my rock. God is faithful. Which way are you going to go, wisdom or impulse? God is my rock. God is wise. Which way are you going to go, patience or restless? God is my rock. God is all-knowing. is my rock! Woo! Time to grab your compass and stand on God's Word. God's Word is like a compass. It tells us the way to go. This week we are learning about the Ten Commandments. Does anyone know what they are? They are God's gifts to us to tell us ways to love others and live a blessed life. Let's watch the Bible story of the week and see how the Ten Commandments are a gift of love, even to people who were turning their back on God. Two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they came to the Sinai Desert and decided to set up camp at the foot of Mount Sinai. There Moses decided to climb up the mountain to enter the presence of the Lord, as God had special instructions for him. God wanted to make sure that the hearts of the Israelites remained faithful. He gave Moses instructions to tell the Israelites to obey him and thereby always be under his guidance and protection. To this, the Israelites agreed. There, after their exodus out of Egypt, the Israelites journeyed for 40 years in the desert. They quickly forgot all the signs and wonders God had done. Their disobedience and complaints rose to new heights, and their hearts began to harden. There on the mountaintop, God wrote Ten Commandments that all Israel were to follow. He also instructed Moses in many other regulations and matters that would help him lead the people of Israel. If they obeyed these rules, God's blessing and protection would be with them. If they broke them, God's punishment would be upon them. These commandments were so special that God wrote them on two stone tablets. Moses spent a long time with God, and the Israelites started to wonder if Moses was ever coming back. With a lack of patience, these people demanded a false god that they could worship. Their wicked hearts forgot about God's providence. When God saw this, he told Moses to go back down the mountain and speak with the people. As Moses came down the mountain, he heard festivities and soon saw the golden calf statue. There the Israelites were, dancing and shouting before this false god. It was an atrocious sight to behold. God's own people, whom he so powerfully rescued only two months ago, turned their hearts from him and were worshipping a false idol. Moses was so angry that he threw the two stone tablets to the ground, smashing them to smithereens. How could these people be so ungrateful? How could they so quickly forget how God delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians? Moses went and stood between the people and shouted, Whoever is on the side of the Lord, come stand with me. 
all the sons of Levi came and stood by Moses. Then Moses gave them instructions to take their swords and kill the rest of the people. Their horrific idol worship had brought a terrible sin upon the people. That day, 3,000 Israelites died because of their wicked hearts and dreadful sin. And soon, God sent a terrible plague upon those that remained. Though God had to punish their disobedience, He still led them on the path to the Promised Land. His forgiveness and mercy still upheld the remaining Israelites. The Israelites were saved by God, but in a short time they decided to create their own idol of a pretend God to worship. These are the commands that God said to the Israelites. You can find them in Exodus 20, verses 1 through 4, 7 through 8, and 12 through 17. Listen to the words of the Lord. God said to the people of Israel, I am the Lord your God, the one who brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. Do not worship any God except me. Do not make idols that look like anything in the sky or on earth or in the ocean under the earth. Do not misuse my name. I am the Lord your God, and I will punish anyone who misuses my name. Remember that the Sabbath day belongs to me. Respect your father and your mother, and you will live a long time in the land I am giving you. Do not murder. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal. Do not tell lies about others. Do not want anything that belongs to someone else. Don't want anyone's house, wife or husband, slaves, oxen, donkeys, or anything else. These are the Ten Commandments that God gave. And you can tell from the story that the people were already disobeying God even before they received all of God's commandments. And because of that, they had a consequence. Sometimes when we disobey or break the law, we get a consequence. And God wanted the people to not have to have sadness in their lives and pain because of their own sin. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your laws and your rules to help us live a life of hope and peace and joy because of your love for us. Sometimes we get afraid, nervous, and forget to trust that God loves us and he has plans for our good. We try to fix things our own way and it causes us pain. May we remember God's love and His word and His rules so we can bless others, walk with hope, and live with peace. We all can choose to trust that God is love and choose loving God versus going our own way and being selfish. Grab your compass and stand on God's word. Let's think about the verse of the week. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. God told us not to have anything more important than him. If we have God be our number one, our God, and put him first over things like, I don't know, TV, hobbies, sports, food, even chocolate, <laughs> we will be so blessed. God made us and has amazing things in mind for us, but we also need to have God be our number one with nothing more important than Him. Not video games, not even our best friends. Listen again, you shall have no other gods before me. What times do you put what you want in front of what God wants you to do? What times are you selfish instead of loving? When we put God first, we can also love others better. Today's big idea says that God is love, and because of his love and his laws, we can know how to love others. We can choose love versus selfishness. Loving the Lord will help us live our lives the way God wants. God is love, and because he loves, he gave us his word, the Bible. He gave us his laws, and he gave us the living word, Jesus. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Guess what, you guys? 
the word in the very beginning was Jesus and God sent Jesus to the earth to be a part of us so that we could one day be with God. Let's pray for the strength that we need every day, thanking God for his love and for providing for all that we need and for his wisdom that he gives us in the Ten Commandments. Dear God, God, you are so wise. Thank you for giving us the Ten Commandments. Help us to obey them. Thank you for giving us Jesus who showed and told us how to live the commandments out with a heart of love for you and others. Amen. God is our good shepherd and God is love. Check out this video about Psalm 23, about the Lord is my shepherd. And remember how our good shepherd loves us. Listen to the words of the Lord as found in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. And you know what? He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This has been the words of the Lord as found in Psalm 23. Amen! Hey guys, with every crossroad we face, we get to choose if we want God's help or not. We get to choose which way to go. We can remain in God's word and he will help us know what to do every day with everything we face. We can also invite friends on the journey with us so they can know God and join Jesus in heaven for all eternity. I don't want to get to heaven and wish someone was there that I never told about God's love. I want to walk through life with Jesus and take as many people to heaven with me as I can. What will you choose? Will you choose to follow Jesus? Will you remain in Christ and seek him with all of your heart? Will you invite others to join you on the journey of faith? As you go, listen to the words of the song, Believe, based on Psalm 23. And have a great week, guys, as you seek to choose, remain, and invite, and follow God every step of the way. Bye! and beats near the quiet stream for you are God you are good by the side through the valley you're always there you 
Church. 